Hi and welcome to this Sonic Academy tech tip. Um, today I'm going to be showing you my favourite technique for layering and cleaning kick drums. So first off I'll show you what we've got. Uh, these are just two kicks which have been uh, lifted from records. Uh, we've got a low one here with a bit of noise on it. As you can hear that's got quite a bit of, uh, there's a bit of a bongo and some other percussion and things on there. And a higher one which is a bit more mid rangey and has also got a bit of reverb to it. So first up um, I'll show you how to do the, the cleaning aspect. Uh, first of all, set a loop around your kick. Um, it kind of helps to uh, actually have the loop uh, starting before the start of the sample, just because live can sometimes glitch um, it, with the aut automation if you don't do this. Um, so we'll set that up so that's looping. So like the low one, we'll deal with that first. Okay, and then uh, add an auto filter <clears throat> on a low pass and just start automating the, uh, the cough. I used to do this using simpler and just using the filter envelopes, but by having a, um, an actual automation curve, you can get much more sort of precise control over it. And obviously you can see it relative to the waveform as well, which I find is quite useful. So usually something like that. You can hear that's better, but we've still got a bit too much of that um, the sort of bongo sound coming through it then. So let's pull it lower there. And there's just a little bit of the other perk sound coming there. So lower there as well. Nearly there. There we go. So you can see just by sort of tweaking these few points on the uh, on the filter curve, you can get the uh, you really control the uh, the filter so that you get the initial transient coming through, but you can really really clamp down on all the extra sound. So that's pretty nice. I mean, that potentially you could use that on its own. But so let's uh, freeze that track and flatten it. Um, that's just because sometimes when you put in filters on, it can actually alter the phase of the waveform. So when we're doing the uh, the uh, visual lining up bit that we're coming on to now. Um, the, it makes the, make sure what you're seeing is accurate. So there's our low kick frozen. And so now let's try layering some of the other one into it. So the trick to this is that you want the sort of phase of the two kicks to line up perfectly. So this is why doing it in, uh, in a range view is useful because you can see the actual, uh, the waveforms and how they line up with one another. So uh, you basically want the sort of peaks of one, uh, the sort of, the curves of the waveform on one to be matching up with those on the other. So <clears throat> as you can see on this one, they're not quite there yet. So if we just turn the grid off, hit command and four and just try sliding it backwards and forwards and see if there's a point where they all line up, which there isn't quite on this one, but it's, uh, it's not far off. So we could maybe go into that and change the tuning. Oops, so you can see. And just fiddle with the tuning until there's a, maybe line up a little bit more sweetly. Uh, not quite, maybe we need to tune up a little bit. Now there we go, you can see that's kind of, almost, let's just fine tune down a little bit. <clears throat> you can see that sort of the main sort of uh, punch of the kick around here, the waves are more or less in phase. So then we don't want the, punch, the attack of both phases, so show fades and fade this one in. So we're kind of using just the punch of the uh, the high kick um, coupled with the, uh, the the base end of the low kick, so <clears throat> got a little uh, straggler there. Get rid of those. Turn the master down a little bit, and you can hear that they send like a real nice uh, solid combination together. So what I usually do for my next step then is to uh, turn the grid back on. As you can see, we've just moved slightly off the grid, so just move them back. But together, of course, you maintain the relationship. So if we just select this one and make sure we select a little bit of silence there as well, um, just to make sure we've got it, and then do consolidate, which is Command and J. And uh, do the same on this one, Command and J. Now these two uh, bits of audio here, <clears throat> if we create a new MIDI track and drag them in one by one, oops, drag them in one by one, uh, <clears throat> group that, and then drag the other one in on a chain. Um, the good thing with this is we can now get a duo with our audio tracks and we now have a MIDI track with the nice layered kick on it. But um, with the added bonus of having separate level controls for the low and high portion. So 
it's good for rather than having to EQ your kick too heavily, you can just sort of adjust the balance between high and low to get it sitting right in your mix. So yeah, that's my uh, favorite technique for layering and cleaning kick drums.